Hi friends, this is Susie, your gaming guru, here to help you solve the puzzle of level 6309 in Candy Crush Saga, where we have 20 moves to clear out 162 jelly. And if you find these videos helpful, I'd ask that you consider liking and subscribing, because that in turn would help me out. So we've got a mess on this board. I just beat it while I was burning off some extra uh, automatic boosters that I had. Uh, so I know it can be done, even though I started with the striped and wrapped. But I also know it's very complex because of all of the different elements we have on the board. So I think it's going to surface well to examine the board first. We've got candy coats. Now when they are equally coated, notice this has three coats. It's got this layer, this layer, and this layer. This one com in comparison only has two. It has this layer and this layer. This has three coats. I can't see if this has three coats or two coats underneath, same with this. But I have to hope that they are equally coated because if they are, then all of those coats pop off all at once and we remove the the entire, you know, not only the coats, but also the candy, the entire thing is gone. Whereas let's say that these are only, these only have two coats. Well, then these might go away, but this is going to stay here with one of its coats remaining. And, and I think we'll see that example when we do the purple. The purple will go away here, but this one won't go away. A coat will be removed, but it won't go away. So, and that's probably the move we're going to take because that may be the only move we have to take in the beginning. Again, it's also hard to see because we've got these crystal candies on top, even though they're somewhat broken through, and we've got these fissures here, that doesn't mean it's easy to see what's going on, but we can move things under here. So let's say, uh, let me give an example of how we can and how we can't. I can move this, it, okay. I can move this blue over to here, but I'm not really doing that. I'm moving the purple over to here. I can take something that's exposed and I can move it into an area that is under crystal. So that's important to note, and we might see better examples of that later. Then we've got licorice. Then we've got these sugar, no, not sugar, these um, magic mixers, but they are locked in licorice. So I think that while they're locked, they're not going to be able to produce anything negative. Once I unlock them, for every three turns that I take that I don't strike them and stun them, they will produce something on the board. They'll throw out some sort of barrier. My guess is licorice because the board is already filled with licorice. Could be anything, could be ticking time bombs. So right now I don't have to worry about it, but there's jelly under here. So I have to get these open as quickly as possible. And then I have to keep beating them up when I do. Uh, then I've got candy cane fences. This cordons off these into basically three sections. We've got some interplay. Then we've got these, uh, conveyor belts with portals. This is blue and it leads to green. So I'm thinking it's going to go from here over to here and then it's going to pick up this green and go this way. And then the same thing here. Although it's hard to tell because we've got two blue, two green, two green, two blue. It's hard to know exactly where it is going to go. Maybe this top goes down to here and comes along this way. Maybe it goes here to here to here to here. It's hard to tell well, actually, I don't think that'll work based on the portal colors. But if they had used four different portal colors, it might be easier, easy for us to tell where it's going. Right now, it's almost impossible until we see it. Then, not to forget the good stuff, we've also got some specials under here that we're going to want to take advantage of. So we've got licorice, licorice locks, magic mixers, crystal candies, conveyor belts, candy coats, a lot to deal with. So we're going to want to try to examine each and every move when we can. Now look at this, we were able to not only hit this once we opened it, but hit it a couple of times. And so now we've got two rivets gone. If I can remove the other two rivets and then hit it one more time, we're golden. Now one thing that I neglected to do is look down here for the initial moves. Nothing was beeping, you know, blinking at me, bouncing around. And so I completely forgot to look to see if I had anything down here. I probably did. And that's one of the problems of this board. It's, there's so much that's kind of buried and hidden. Uh, so we do still have this one purple that we said we would have. I don't see any other good moves except the one that's blinking at me. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take it, but notice the candy coats are not equal, so we ended up still with some blue. Now I'm going to look back up here. I'm going to make sure that I'm looking at absolutely everything. I am going to try to take out those candy coats up here. I could try to open this blue a little bit more, but I think what I'm going to do is make this stripe take out licorice, open things up and get things flowing. We're also going to unfortunately see what this has in store for us. Because I don't think I'm going to hit it unless the fish, oh, the fish went for it. Nice. Okay, and then I can hit it again while making this stripe. I think that's probably the best move. Although sometimes on a board like this, it's easy to take a good move without looking for the best. So if I do this, I make a stripe that hopes, hopefully can you know help to open this up, although the conveyor belt will probably take it away. I strike this so I remove another rivet. I bring this green down, which then strikes this again. So it should not only remove it, but it should explode with force and open more things up. Plus we've got the blue. I don't know, the explosion may take that away. Uh, I could also do this, take out some licorice down here and try to bring things downward. I could do this. I don't see anything as nice as this. So this is what we're going for. We removed everything. Now we've got one, two, three of these exposed and it's going to be harder to reach them now. Uh, they are in the first stages. These two are in the first, oh, no, sorry, these three are in the first stages. This one, two more turns and it's going to explode. And I've got crystal candies covering licorice. So I need specials to help me with this. So let's take a look. I could set this off. It would set off a fish. Maybe the fish would attack. The fish do go for that. I could put this purple together and try to get these going, but these are candy coated differently. I could make a stripe here and try to get some good cascading. I could reach in through here this way or this way. I kind of think based on the number of moves going with kind of the biggest move that might help us is going to be important. Now this looks pretty good. It'll open things up, but of course this isn't going to be set off and even if it were to be set off, it would get stuck here. This is about to explode and I might not be able to stop it. So I think what I need to do is hit the rest of these that I can as much as possible. And I can hit actually, I think all three of these. I can do this, which hits this. I can do this, which hits this, this one. And I can do this, which hits this one. It hits this one and it opens things up for me. I'm gonna go for that. Opens things a little bit. Oh gosh, this one's going to. Now, I could do that, and I didn't even notice that. I can't do this, though, because this is coated. It's not going to blend. It's going to just bounce back and forth. So I think what I'm going to do so that I don't lose these is I'm going to open this up and try to get this going on its own. Not quite, but look at this. I can hit both of these now. Uh, I could open this one and hit these. I think I kind of have to do that. Yeah, I could do this as well. It doesn't look bad, but I'm seeing if I can get a combo, even though I'm going to be going through a lot of licorice. Let's see what I can do here. So now I've got a combo. It's going to hit this, and I think it's going to hit this, although this licorice may get in the way. And what I'm going for is a lot of chaos. It's going to hit this, which is going to kind of go off this way. We're going to be rearranging the board. Yeah, see, this one didn't get struck because that licorice was protecting it. All right, this is about to go. These are about to go. But I have the opportunity to strike this one and this one with the stripe while making a color bomb and setting free a fish. So instead of doing something like this, or even better would be this, I'm going to go for the long game here. And that worked. Taking out a color concentrates things down and gives us more cascading. Look at how beautiful this is now. So now we've got a lot of these taken care of. Just one left and an opportunity to make another color bomb and maybe unwrap this. Now there's going to be a lot of fury with this. Remember how we saw a lot of cascading already? There's probably going to be the same amount. 
Actually, there wasn't, and that's to our advantage, because now we get to use this or this. Some people ask me, what's better, a color bomb stripe or a color bomb wrapped? And my advice is to really look at the board and contemplate. One of the advantages of the color bomb wrapped is it takes out a lot of layers, and we've got a lot of layers here we need to get through. One of the advantages of the color bomb stripe is it reaches across the board and up and down. And whereas, like, so we've got some green. If we do with the color bomb wrapped, we've got some green right here. And that looks really good because it's right next to some of this and it's down here. But let's focus on these guys. Well, we've got this green, but here's the problem. These are super weighted. So these could start blowing up first and drop these down out of the way of this. And that's the danger. If all of the things I need to reach are towards the bottom, or let's say, you know, sometimes there's like, uh, let's say this green is sitting here and there is like a candy cane fence or a four layer thick frosting right here and it's sitting on a ledge and so it can't drop down before it explodes, then this would definitely be a great choice. I'm just afraid we're gonna leave this behind. Now let's take a look at the stripes. Some folks don't know that you can determine which way the stripes are going to go and it's because every other one goes vertically or horizontally and we always start with um, horizontal when we're counting it out. We omit anything that will not change. So this is a blue, uh, but it's not going to change because we're going to be using it up. If there were any other blue stripes, it, those could change direction based on making this move. Uh, some of the other things that don't change are lucky candies because they always correspond directly to order fulfillment. And so they wouldn't convert into stripes unless we fulfilled all of our orders on an order board. So I know it's a bit confusing, but I have a tutorial. If you have additional questions, I can give that to you. All right, so this would go horizontally and this would go vertically and this would go horizontally and this would go vertically. And that's really all I need to know. This is going to strike down through here. So it's going to clear out all of these. I don't even have to see which way these are going to go. And then I could count these out, but here's what I know. I know that if they alternate back and forth and I've got four on the bottom row, two are going to end up going vertically and two are going to go horizontally. So we're going to be striking this, if we use this combo, two times from these, plus at least once from here, maybe more, and we're going to be opening up that fish. I think that this is what I need to do. So my determination, because we've got some jelly up high, is this is better than this. They're not up terribly high. If I had a green like right here, I'd probably still go for this. It's so impressive. But because the green I have might fall down, I'm going to take this and hope that I can clear out everything. There we go. All right, so that is how I beat this level. It's tricky, so much to watch and so much to think through. But when you do take a level like this that's not listed as a super hard level and you experiment with it, even if you lose a few times, you'll be learning more about how things operate on other levels as well. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.